Hello everybody, we are fresh off about 30 hours of travel. We went from the airport straight to Hastings, Deering, the local Caterpillar dealer in this region. We're in Mackay, Australia. This is the Bowen Basin. There's a lot of coal up here and Hastings Deering supplies the haul trucks, the loaders, the dozers, the excavators, all of the equipment or a lot of the equipment necessary to get the coal out of the ground, put it into ships, and send it to Southeast Asia, Asia for power and steel. It's absolutely essential. And we're gonna check out the shops to see what it takes to build the machines, care for the machines. So let's go. They've got boot brushes here too. Uh, 793F, yeah. uh, so 240 ton dump truck. Um, it's done uh, 10 more full trails, so full trails by it. Um, full life, uh, 30,000 hours on it, and it's uh, due for a, for a full rebuild. Wow. So it's about six weeks duration in shop, so put about 2,500 uh, man hours. See how sort of clean the workshops, you know, uh, has to be. Yeah. Uh, we run about four star CC can CC rating here. He said this is the smaller bay for the smaller footprint machines. That's a D11. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got your, your track frames, they'll come in, in in one piece through here, separated in the dirty side, come through the whole process of disassembly, inspect, reclaim, rebuild, through to assembly, assemble, oil, and paint it out the other side. So it's a full lane strategy through this workshop in just two days. It's amazing how organized it is. So we're in the we're in the track shop. This is one of the idlers here on this machine that essentially spins it, adds more metal to it, essentially, and then they'll uh, mill it, and it'll be ready to go back to work as essentially a new idler for another I don't know however many thousand plus hours. So you can hear, this is an idler that's come in with about 8,000 hours on, he said. And you can see it's kind of like a, a, a valley in there. So over there, that's what they're doing is they're basically building that back up so it's level. So this is what it looks like when they're done with that process over there. And this is ready to go back on the machine for another 8,000 hours. So these, these are all 11 D11 idlers that came in and they all get disassembled, measured, which then determines how much work they have to do to them before they send them back out. Because the, the, the goal is to get them back to that factory spec before they put them on that rebuild machine. But each one's a little bit different. Huh. and roll it back up, we can have it in and out in 30 hours. Wow. And we'll do three at a time. So they have three track presses. They only do D10s and D11s because they have so many in the region, they can't accommodate anything smaller than that. So only D10s, D11s here. About 30 hours per track to completely disassemble and reassemble it again before they ship it out for whatever dozer it's going on. Seven nine three, fresh out of the shop, done with a rebuild. They're putting it on the trailer right now, making sure it's balanced on there before they take off to the mine site, wherever it is, out of the middle of nowhere. But you can see right here, so this is the 793 that's rebuilt. 
they took the ramps out now. It's sitting on stands. So the tires, the front tires are off the trailer. The front tires are not even on the trailer. It's just, just getting this thing centered on this trailer is a chore. Whew. So crazy. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so this is a 796 AC electric drive Caterpillar. I've been in a 794, a 798 up in Canada, but this is the right in-between truck. You have the buddy seat, my seat, gear selector. It's like the other trucks we've been in, very straightforward. There's nothing all that different uh, because this is an Australian spec machine. Funny enough, we're in Australia. You drive on the right side of the car, but the haul trucks are still left-hand drive like they are in the United States and North America. So, you still drive a haul truck in Australia. Uh, I said, left-hand drive. Left-hand drive, confirmed. So the dozers, there's a few 11s over there that came in from the United States. They're built in Illinois. And it's really just the tractor. There's not a whole lot to them. And then they come in here and at the dealer is where they put on all the, the handrails, the grease systems, the fire suppression, the tape, the numbers, the GPS, all of the fancy Australian mine spec equipment is fitted here. And then once they're done, which is a lot of work, the numbers even, they're then shipped to the mine site. But it's a ton of work to get this machine ready from when it gets shipped in to when it's actually gonna go to work. It's missing something, I just can't. I think it's a convertible option. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So this tractor, this is a D11. It went from Illinois, Peoria, Illinois, to the port of Savannah. And I just took pictures at the port of Savannah a few weeks ago. And it goes all the way around the world to Brisbane. Here it says it weighs 161,000 pounds, but when finished, it's about a quarter million pounds. So they add, it, there's no blade, there's no push arms, there's no cab, there's no ROPS on this tractor, there's no ripper, all of that once added is another 90,000 pounds. It's a lot of weight. 796 tires. That's pretty big. So all of these trucks, they're all ready. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The number of the day is six. 796 AC trucks ready for shipping. The problem is they need infrastructure to be constructed to get the trucks to the mine from here. So these trucks have been sitting, waiting on that infrastructure before they can even go to the mine because they ship them whole like this. They don't build them out on site. They build them here, put them on a truck and get them out to the mine. But you need big roads and big bridges to do that. So this is a 794 that's in pieces right now. That's somewhat how they ship it. They ship it in these individual components. And then what they're doing out here is assembling the components. So you have the drivetrains, the cab, the engine, everything is being set up. And then finally they'll put the tires on and the bed will be fitted when they get out on site. That's shipped separately. But other than that, 
that whole truck will go out to site just like that. Depending on where the dozers are going, there's multiple ripper configurations around here. They're most of the mining in this region, it's the Bowen Basin, it's mostly coal. So these dozers are either ripping overburden or they're ripping coal, which is a lot softer. Depending on the material, this is triple shank. So they have one, two, three shanks that they sink into the ground, whereas most of the other dozers I've seen around here have just the single shank. So you're just putting with the single shank a lot more force on that one little area, whereas this can tear up more area, but it'll work in softer ground. It's going on that 11 right there. This is the 794. He said the purchase price on the 794 is higher than the 796 because the 796 are conventional manned machines. These are gonna be the autonomous machines. So there's a lot more technology on this machine that they have to fit and calibrate before it can go to work. But we will see a few of these out at the T site tomorrow being calibrated, getting ready to work. This is one of the, the final ones that'll be out there after we're out there. So with these machine builds right here, they're, they're D10s. These are what's called the ROPS, the rollover protection structure. The cab's on there now, but it's missing that yellow bit over the top, which is what this is. It bolts on, you can remove it. They remove it for the sake of shipping, so it's not as high when they're driving it down the road to get it here. But now they're gonna put this on. This simple structure right here is to do exactly what it is called if that dozer does roll over. It will protect that operator in the cab. This is engineered to support over two times the weight of that dozer. So it's nearly half a million pounds can be sitting on this frame right here before it'll fail, which is pretty insane. Hopefully it's never used, but an essential bit of kit right there. That's a 793 getting rebuilt behind that enormous engine, which is the power plant for that truck. That looks to be a remanufactured engine. So that engine is ready to go back into that chassis for that rebuild. So they'll pull the old engine out, send it off for rebuild, pull a new one, put it right back in that body, put the hoses, wiring harnesses on it, ready to go. Um, this is a basically a scheduling software that I've seen used for construction projects quite often. I had a class on this in college, unfortunately, but they use it for scheduling a rebuild like this 793 right behind me. So you can go in here, it's 793F, replace cabin air filter element and it'll give you um, Thursday one hour and then what type of labor is needed and it goes through so this is one two three four weeks four. all of the work happening in the next month that they can see on the schedule so they can manage the project effectively manage the time manage the labor make sure it's on schedule it's so stupid simple, but I've never seen this done before. It probably works like a charm. Yeah. It's like, that makes This is a 8750, Bucyrus 8750 drag line. But if you look very closely, you can tell it's a scale model. But this is, I mean, to put in, this is a 150 scale model. This is the second shop they have here in Mackay, Hastings Deering. Behind me, another 794 getting built. The difference with this shop is that we have this indoor structure here with a 100 ton crane overhead. So they can do all of the work to assemble these trucks with that crane. They don't need a mobile crane like they did at the build pads we were just at. So these trucks come together right here, drive out the door, right onto a float, out to the mine site.
to avoid the copyrighted Prince music going on in the shop right now, there's two beds getting welded together. They were fabricated in Mexico. They're shipped in half for the sake of space. And then they stick them together. They weld one side, flip it over, weld the other side, and then ship the bed separate of the truck, fit the bed to the truck at the site. And there you go. Every bed, depending on where you're at in the world, is different for the specific kind of material. So that bed is specific to the T site where they're moving that material to the coal mine. So the they bolt it together, they weld the top, and then they cut all that off and weld this side. 300 hours of welding per side, so 600 hours total to get this bed together. Just right down the middle. 600 hours of welding. Day one. Complete. I'm exhausted. That was a long day. <laughs>